not too bad looking for an SUV, right? Well, there is more. Also, the residuals are pretty good. But I will tell you all about that in this video as we will cover how much the Macan loses per year and per thousand miles driven. What's up YouTube and welcome to a new video. Now there's a lot to like about the Macan and it does then also make it the most sold Porsche model in the US. Contrary though to many other models which I analyzed on the channel, I only received two requests for the Macan. One from Vic and one from Michael. Now normally I look for markets which are requested more frequently, but this case is slightly different. I namely found myself in the market for a Macan not too long ago. Now let's have a look at the Macan market and as always we will take a few steps to analyze the numbers. In step number one, we will have a look at the full Macan market and we will consider some general numbers. After that, we will have a look at the depreciation per year and per thousand miles driven. I will also show you then which Macan model offers the best value for money. The base version, the sports edition, the S, the GTS or the Turbo. In step number three, I will show you then how all of these numbers compare to some other cars which I've analyzed on the channel. And in step number four, we will conclude. Let's start now by investigating the full market and the graph for that should be appearing now on your screen. You can see that we have the model year on the horizontal axis and the price on the vertical axis. And the price is in US dollars because we're looking at the US market. Each car is represented by a bubble and the black axis show the most occurring price point for each model year. First off, we can see that the market is huge. There are namely 4,328 cars for sale. Also, the price variation is large. Prices start at high 20s, but go up all the way till $120,000. So yes, you need to bring a decent amount of money to get yourself into a Macan. But on the other hand, you could also spend the same amount of money on an equivalent size new Toyota. Now a large part of the price variation what you see can of course be explained by the different models. So let's identify those. You can see that we have the base model now in blue and this is the entry level four cylinder. Then we have the sport edition in purple and this is the base model plus some sporty options like the active suspension management and the sport chrono package. In orange we have then the S version and this is of course the one with the V6 twin turbo. The GTS we can find then in red and the turbo is displayed in green. Now in terms of popularity, the base model takes the lead with around 2800 cars which are offered for sale. This is then followed by the S, the Turbo and the GTS. In terms of pricing, you can see that the Turbo is the most expensive with an average price of $75,000. For all models you can see though that prices decrease rapidly once the car ages. And this of course is the depreciation. In fact, a Macan loses $6,900 per year. Now let's have a closer look at that and insert the depreciation per year curves in the graph. Now before we have a look at the numbers, I need to mention that I cleaned this graph slightly. I namely only included new cars in model year 2020 and only used cars in the other model years. And the reason for this is that it gives nice and clean depreciation curves. So how are we going to analyze these numbers? Well, we will first have a look at each individual model type and then after that we have a look at the big picture and compare the depreciation patterns of the different model types. And because there's quite a big overlap between them, I will put each of the model types in a separate graph. First we have the base model in orange and this model loses on average $8,000 per year or 13% of its new price. And please bear in mind that this is an average number. And that means that this number goes for all of the different spec levels. Now let's inspect this curve a little bit closer. You can see that prices start at $50,000, but that you can spec it up till around $75,000. So there's a space of $27,000, which you can add just by specking the car. On average though, a new base model is specced up to $62,000. Now if we follow the depreciation curve, then we can see that in the first three years of ownership, the depreciation is hardly flattening. It is almost a straight line. What is also interesting is that the price variation hardly reduced. We saw that these new models can fluctuate with around $27,000 depending on the spec. Now if we look at model year 2017, then we can see that there's still quite a bit of price variation as there's a variation of $24,000. And this is quite unique. It namely means that only a small portion of the premium what you pay for the spec level evaporates over the years. And I can assure you, there are car markets where this is a lot higher. Now then, let's move on to the S model. 
But before we do so, please remember to support the channel by smashing that like button. The S model loses on average $8,800 per year or 12% of its new price. Prices for a new S start at $60,000 and they are spec'd up till $92,000. And as you can see, this means that there is quite a large overlap with the base model. A medium spec base of $60,000 will then also get you into a low spec S. On average though, an S is around $11,500 more expensive than the base version. Now if we follow the depreciation curve, then we can see that it starts to form a bottom. In the first year you can namely expect to lose on average $9,400. In the fifth year however, this decreased till $3,700 or 5% of its new price. And on that note, let's move on to the GTS in red. Obviously, this is quite a step up from the S and compared to a new S, you need to bring around $14,000 more to your local Porsche dealer. But also here, there's a big overlap between the S and the GTS in terms of new prices. A medium spec S will also get you an entry level GTS. Now if we look then at the depreciation, then we can see that this is $11,300 per year or 13% of its new price. And just as with the base model, we can see a slight curve in the depreciation line, but not yet quite as strong as for the S model. Finally then, let's move on to the daddy, the turbo. So the premium for a new turbo over a new GTS is around $11,000. And you can see from the price levels that the turbo is a big step up from the GTS. There is hardly any price overlap. It are only the high spec GTSs which enter the price territory of the turbos. Now then, the depreciation numbers. The turbo loses on average $12,000 per year and this equals 12% of its new value. And if we follow the depreciation curve for the turbo, then we can see that there's quite a large price drop between model year 2016 and 17. And this price drop is caused by the introduction of the performance package. This package would cost you around $11,000 and adds 40 extra horsepower, air suspension, the sport chrono package and some other goodies which you normally want to have in a top of the line SUV. Now it is of course so that it is more expensive to select each of these options individually than to go for the package. So as you can imagine this package was quite popular. And with that being said let's take now one step backwards and have a look at the general market patterns. And to do that we go back to the graph where we had all of the model types together. This makes it easier to compare. First, we can see that the depreciation pattern is more or less the same for all model types. We did then also see that the relative depreciation per year is more or less the same for each model type at a rate of 12% per year. And this has a big consequence. If we look for example at the S model, then we can see that from new, the gap to a base model is $11,500. Now for the GTS this is $14,000 and for the Turbo this is $25,000. Now when the car ages, these gaps become smaller. In 2017 for example, the gap to the base model is only $7,200 and to the GTS $7,700. So the price gap between the models is reduced by around 40 to 45%. And if we look a bit further, then we can even see that the gap to the turbo is reduced to $8,300 in model year 2015. And the reason for this is of course that the more expensive models lose their value quicker in absolute terms. In relative terms though, there's not such a big difference. Now on the flip side, if you are in the market for a used Macan, you can of course benefit from this tremendously. The top of the line models such as the Turbo and GTS will namely offer better value for money the older they get. By spending that additional $8,300 for a car from model year 2015, you could namely upgrade to a Turbo. Spending the same amount on a new S won't even get you into a GTS. There are of course some other points to consider here such as the warranty and the maintenance cost. But even after correcting for those, there is value wise probably not a better deal out there. Now then, let's stop here for a moment and take a little detour. I namely frequently get asked the question why I don't investigate if cars with a certain color go for a premium. And the answer to this question is in most cases quite simple. For most car markets there are namely not enough cars for sale in an exotic color. And this makes it very difficult to statistically verify that those cars are priced different because of their color. 
and not because of some other factor like the mileage or the model year. The Macan market is however quite large, so I quickly want to show you the color split. That is appearing now on your screen and you can see that we have now the different model types and that each color is displayed by a different line. And as you can see, there's not really any difference in depreciation. There seems to be going on something for the S's in model year 2014, but the large shaded area indicates that there's a lot of uncertainty in the line due to the small number of observations. All right, so far we have only considered the depreciation per year. But another important factor for the price is of course the mileage. So let's also have a look at the depreciation per thousand miles driven. And we will cover this a lot quicker than the depreciation per year because the differences are not that large. You can see now that we have the mileage on the horizontal axis and that the price is still displayed on the vertical axis. Now, if we look at the different depreciation lines, then you can see that all of the cars lose between six and $700 per thousand miles driven. What also goes for all of them is that the largest drop takes place when you drive the car out of the showroom. For a used car, the depreciation is also a lot lower than these six to $700 per thousand miles. Finally then, you can see that after 40,000 miles, the effect of the mileage on the price starts to decrease. The data points in that area namely fall above the depreciation line. So now we know that the Macan loses on average 10 to 12% per year and six to $700 per thousand miles driven. But are these numbers high or low? That we can find out by using the depreciation leaderboard. This leaderboard namely compares the cars which I've analyzed on this channel and it should be appearing now on your screen. You can see that we have the age of a car market on the horizontal axis and the relative average depreciation per year on the vertical axis. If we find the Macan, then we can see that it scored quite okay with a rate of 10.2% per year. Note that this is the rate for all of the model types combined. Unfortunately, I don't have any other SUVs on the leaderboard, so it's difficult to compare. Now, if we compare it to what we have, then we can see that it does much better than, for example, a BMW M4 or Mercedes-Benz C63 AMG. Those namely have an average rate of 12%. The Macan does, however, much worse than a California T. This car has a rate of 6.2%. Overall, though, I would say that this is not a bad performance for a luxury SUV. It sits slightly on the wrong side of the trend line, but then again, the trend line is based on sport and supercars. I, by the way, also checked the depreciation per thousand miles leaderboard, and there we can see more or less the same result. And on that note, let's wrap up this video and conclude. The Macan's depreciation curve is a bit like the car itself. It does everything what you expect it to do. It does this, however, in a very Porsche way. What do I mean by this? Well, there are a few things which are more often than not the case with the Porsche's depreciation curve. First, the drop in the first year of ownership is relatively small when you compare it to other cars. It is of course still the largest drop in its lifetime, but you're not going to find any 30% drops. Second, the depreciation rate is relatively constant throughout the years, and only after three to four years we can see a flattening of the curve. Finally then, we can also see that the older the car gets, the closer the different model types come in terms of price point. In other words, the premium for a different model type fades away over the years. And with those three points, we arrive at the end of the video. Now, if you like this type of analysis, but you would love to see it for a different car, then I recommend that you check out my channel. There you will find analysis for many other cars, such as the BMW M3, and the Porsche 911. Now, if you can't find the car for which you would like to see an analysis, then you can comment it down below in the comment section. Once there are enough requests for a certain car, I will make a video about it. Also remember then to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get actually notified when your requested analysis goes live. As always, a huge thank you for watching and I hope to see you next week for a new video.